Um, with regards to my presentation, I'll briefly give an introduction, highlighting the uh, questions of uh, uh, regional migration in Africa. I will also look at issues of intra regional migration, and then, of course, uh, with regards to the ECOWAS, the ECOWAS Treaty, and then, of course, the all the protocols. I will look at the chair of integration, trying to draw on the chair of uh, integration to kind of like uh, give a theoretical insights into why there are apparent or semi challenges in the effective implementation of the uh, ECOWAS Treaty and, of course, and the good reports. I will dwell on the challenges and also uh, look at efforts towards uh, regional migration and, of course, speak to what I would say about the position. Towards uh, effective regional migration and of course uh, integration in the uh, ECOWAS region. Um, regional economic migration and integration has always been a topical issue with regards to the whole African continent or uh, issue of national uh, agendas. And uh, with the establishment of, uh, during the establishment of United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, uh, we saw the evolution of uh, several regional countries who are the MESA, uh, which involved from the potential trade uh, area in the uh, South, Southern Africa and Eastern African zone, uh, ECAS, and of course the uh, uh, Arab Maghreb Union. These were all regional countries that involved in the quest towards regional uh, integration in Africa. And of course, if you look at the 2015 Valletta Conference, they also emphasized the need for uh, Political and economic uh, uh, cooperation as a way to solving uh, the root causes of irregular migration, especially from uh, sub Saharan Africa. Um, but prior to that, either to all these conferences on what we would have the AU, especially the Lagos uh, uh, Accord, the AU, the 1991 uh, treaty, basically emphasizes on the, uh, the issue of. Uh, regional integration with the establishment or the formation of the African Economic Community. All these efforts were towards uh, forming or facilitating an efficient uh, intra-regional and of course regional integration within Africa, with the AU and the world. But within the West African region, West Africa has always been a highly mobile uh, area. Um, really in his work, in his book, uh, talked about the West African region being a walk across the either to the arrival of colonialism and similar movement of people across uh, societies, uh, but the enactment of uh, political borders with the arrival of colonialism or uh, advent of uh, independence, this has been way kind of like a uh, restricted uh, population mobility in West Africa. But when, uh, with ECOWAS, with the establishment of ECOWAS, it has in a way kind of like facilitated the intense movement of people uh, between nation states, between the Africa's, uh, West Africa and South region. Um, with the, uh, the ECOWAS passport, with the ECOWAS treaty, and of course, the protocol, as they join member states to allow for the free movement of persons within community member states after about 90 days without visa. And this one, uh, this ECOWAS treaty and associated protocols also kind of like emphasize the need for uh, community members to be able to stay in member states and be able to reside and be able to carry out uh, the economic activities without any prohibition. Um, if you look at the Article 59 of the Revised Treaty, uh, it emphasizes that citizens of the community shall have the right entry, residence, and establishment, and, uh, and member states undertake to recognize these rights of uh, community members. With the uh, second article of the uh, section of the Article 59, also emphasize that member states undertake to adopt all appropriate measures to ensure that community citizens enjoy full, fully the rights granted and integrated in Section 1 of the Article. And lastly, member states undertake to adopt at national level all measures necessary for the effective implementation uh, of the provisions stipulated as part of the Article 59 of the Ecowas Treaty. 
And aside, as I stated earlier, aside this epoch which you have on the first phase, the second phase, and of course the third phase of the protocols, that kind of like emphasizes the seamless movement of people uh, within and across uh, member states within the uh, ECOWAS region. Now, um, what we uh, make of um, all these uh, articles and protocols, what uh, ECOWAS um, protocols sought to do is to kind of like uh, promote regional migration and economic integration because embedded in these ECOWAS Treaty and of course the Associated Protocols also have uh, efforts towards economic integration as well with the enactment uh, of the trade liberalization scheme. We also have other strategies that have been employed with the uh, ECOWAS travel certificate, from the ECOWAS passport, and of course other strategies that have been put in place to kind of like uh, help the movement or uh, facilitate the free movement of people, and of course goods and services. Now, in trying to analyze the challenges that are uh, embedded in this uh, in the implementation of the power structures and protocols, I try to kind of like look at uh, secondary data, do text analysis of policy documents, of course, of the power switching, and several other things that have been done by Professor Wubila Depoju and several prominent persons who have been working in this area. Um, the basis for this paper is basically to draw the um, the theoretical concept of integration. Uh, with the integration followed uh, with the establishment of the, uh, the European uh, Economic Union at the time, uh, people were trying to understand what were some of the underpinning uh, uh, ways by which there was a kind of uh, economic integration within the uh, European Union. Um, with the works of uh, Haas, Ernst Haas, he looked at integration as a process whereby political actors in several distinct national settings are persuaded to shift their loyalties, expectations, and political activities to a new center whose institutions possess or demand jurisdiction over pre existing national states. The end result of a process of political integration is a new political community that imposed over pre existing ones. So, for uh, integration, it basically looks at nation states kind of like uh, relinquishing their powers, certain powers in certain areas to a center that kind of like oversees uh, uh, the activities of all these nation states or political actors in trying to kind of like facilitate an integra integration process. But it can be political, it can be security, and it can be what? Economic. Um, in looking at integration, I would like to focus on this new functional approach where he came up with what we call the concept of Speed over. With this concept of speed over, we have the functional uh, and then the political speed over. With the functional speed uh, over, it basically tries to understand how integration in certain uh, sections or aspects of uh, uh, the economy can facilitate an effective or a holistic integration in other aspects. With the political uh, uh, speed over, as was trying to look at it in terms of political actors acting in a way to kind of like in their own interest. And so through lobbying, through acting and kind of like negotiating with other political actors to facilitate the integration process. So uh, for me, I'm thinking that integration will become a self sustaining process that will eventually lead to the creation of supranational political units or entities, just like the Apple was. So for me, I'm drawing on this uh, concept of uh, theory of integration to look at why, for instance, if there has been the possibility of a uh, regional population movement within the West African region with the, uh, uh, all the member states ratifying the uh, ECOWAS Treaty, which allows for free movement within the member states for up to 90 days without visa. If there's kind of like collaboration in this aspect, why is it that we are not seeing uh, a fully functional uh, ECOWAS integration in ECOWAS in terms of political and economic integration, and of course, uh, the seamless movement of people across the, the region. So, as I already indicated, uh, as to the nation states who try to control their own kind of like, uh, ability to take decisions on certain issues and try to concentrate their ability into one center, and this center oversees uh, the whole agenda of integration. 
So I would like to say that integration can be social, it can be economic, it can be political. In this sense, integration can take, uh, take place in one aspect without necessarily having uh, taken place in another aspect. So if, for example, we have free movement in uh, uh, kind of like uh, West Africa, there's a possibility that, and as we are seeing, uh, in terms of economic integration, that aspect is still lagging. So it can, we can have integration in one aspect, and then uh, we can have challenges in another aspect. But the shortcoming of the integration theory has to do with its deterministic approach. Because and for Haas himself, he did not anticipate uh, the rise of populism like what we are seeing today uh, in the case of Europe, because his focus was mainly on trying to explain economic integration within Europe. So he did not foresee the rise of populism or nationalism, like what we are seeing in the case of uh, Catalonia and Spain, what we are seeing with Brexit. He did not really foresee that something similar like that would happen. So would that something similar like that happen within the West African region, even if we have a, a fully functional integration process? Now, what are the main challenges? What are issues of valid government of the We have ECOWAS has kind of like come out with the ECOWAS passport. We have come out with the ECOWAS uh, uh, travel certificates. But not all the countries have uh, kind of like adopted this. For example, Benin, Guinea-Bissau, uh, Ivory Coast, Liberia, and several other countries have not actually recognized uh, or adopted the ECOWAS travel certificate. Um, with the ECOWAS passport, almost every country has adopted it. I don't know about Senegal yet, I'm still, but not, it's still not adopted to the fullest life where every country will say, that, okay, we have the ECOWAS passport, we'll take it. And besides, even ECOWAS committee citizens are not even aware because of high literacy rates or inability or difficulties in attaining travel, uh, travel documents and all what have you. It, it is not actually an effective way, even though it has been adopted by most countries. And with the ECOWAS travel certificate, that has been kind of like uh, implemented as a cheaper and easier way. Um, not all the countries have actually uh, adopted it. And a significant or a most profound uh, challenge with regards to population movement is that you, people, you are not able to identify the nationalities. You cannot tell whether this person is from Nigeria, you cannot tell whether this person is from Benin, because normally people don't have documentation. So they just get up and then they move. So that is a very serious challenge that uh, is kind of like hampering uh, the free movement. It creates uh, opportunity for sometimes harassment and challenges, especially at uh, the borders of entry or course of entry. Um, I've had similar experiences at the uh, Baga border, uh, the Ghana, Burkina Faso border, and of course, recent experience also uh, in Nigeria, where I had problems um, with my passport because as passport wasn't the uh, ECOWAS passport, I was still using the old uh, Ghana passport. So these are kind of real challenges that uh, we are experiencing. Of course, I mentioned that the ECOWAS travel certificate, not all the countries uh, have implemented all these uh, ECOWAS travel certificates. And I mentioned Benin, most especially, Ivory Coast, Guinea Bissau, and then Liberia. And another issue has to do with countless national custom and police checkpoints and barriers. A major reason why this always comes up has to do with national security because of uh, transboundary crime and what of you. When you are traveling, for example, from the Tema Abo, straight up north through Tamale, up to the Paga border, all the way up to Niger, you encounter countless and countless custom barriers, especially if you are clearing a car. For example, if you are moving a vehicle that you clear that you are transporting to Burkina Faso, where I had an experience like that. Throughout the night, for every kilometer or two or three kilometers that you encounter, you have custom barriers there, you have police barriers there, and until you pay the token, you cannot move. And when you pay, they will put something like a stamp. And if it happened that I passed one custom barrier, I refused to pay, I got, I traveled more than to the next big city. And when they realized that I had not stamped at the other end, even though it was meaningless, it was just meaningless, they were just stamping there, you just collect their money, I was made to return all the way back to where. Uh, not do the stamp, stamp before they allowed me to cross. So these are all the issues. But 
there are efforts that are being made to kind of like uh, tackle this issue. Recently, the vice president that we just uh, uh, had a with, he announced that they were from September, uh, they were going to kind of like have uh, eliminate all barriers along the road. I'm yet to confirm that at this time now we'll try to uh, investigate and find out whether that has been done. But prior to that, there have been suggestions of uh, two barriers in the country throughout the, uh, the road. So these are efforts that have been made. And aside from that, we also have language difficulties. So for example, if you are moving from Nigeria or from moving from Ghana to uh, Nafaso, you are switching from English to French. So language dif difficulties also uh, comes in here because you are not able, because of the differences uh, in uh, immigration and immigration forms or language differences, we always have all these long queues of uh, vehicular traffic and all those things and they have implications for economic and uh, 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 social implications because you have to stay at the border because you have all these big trucks waiting there to pass or they eventually just prevent you from moving. And of course, Issues of incompatibilities related to national economic uh, migration policies in uh, situation at least uh, uh, national labor and labor force in uh, member countries. So, for example, in Ghana, according to the Ghana Investment Promotion Council Act, if you are a citizen, if I sit, uh, not a citizen, you are not supposed to engage in certain aspects of the economy. So, for example, in the informal sector, where we have all these uh, small-scale businesses. Focus on what have you, you are virtually prevented or prohibited in dealing in such economic activities. And even if you want to, kind of like enter into those areas, you must employ up not less than 10 persons as part of the business. And there's a provision for about $300,000 before you actually are from certain businesses in, uh, uh, in Ghana. And in Nigeria, for example, there were also similar cases of uh, discrimination against other. For example, expulsions and all those things in Ivory Coast and Nigeria were made. And somewhere uh, in Obasanjo's and Jews government, about 96 schools were especially banned from Ghana. So these are all policies that tend to kind of like discriminate against other citizens. And if you are not a citizen in certain countries, you cannot work in certain aspects of the uh, national economy or certain public sectors. So, for example, in Mali or in Ghana, if you are not a citizen, you cannot work sector or the public service sector. So these are all issues uh, that come about. How discrimination often also tends to lead to what expulsion. We have similar cases in Ivory Coast where mostly settler farmers in the Coco area are being I mean, uh, repatriated back to uh, what is it, uh, Burkina Faso. And we have also historical kind of like uh, instances of where Ghanaians were uh, repatriated or sent back from Nigeria in the early 80s. And then in the uh, 1970s, Ghana also did the same with the Aliens Compliance Law. So these are issues that are still happening in terms of free movement within the West African region. And of course, uh, it was expected that within by like 2000, we have what we call the uh, common currency. That is still something that we are grappling with. And of course, it's a free liberalization scheme uh, has that one also has issues. It says that there shouldn't be trade quotas, there shouldn't be prohibitions or uh, quantities that have been allocated to kind of like non citizens. But these are also issues that are coming up. And of course, issues related to the common tariff, common external tariff. We have national tax uh, uh, differences across the region, and this has implications also for economic integration. So, but there are also other efforts that are being made. The free movement of uh, uh, almost every country has ratified the uh, But the expectation is that if almost everybody, uh, every country has uh, ratified, there should be free movement. But that is not the case. So, why is that there's no spillover as uh, Haas is talking about? So, but nonetheless, there are other uh, efforts that are being made. The Forward Summer approach on migration that was done in 2008. It came out with six principles. All gearing towards the free movement of goods, persons, and the right to establishment, and of course, the eventual ultimate economic integration between the West African countries. As I mentioned earlier, on countless checkpoints and barriers, uh, there's a proposition of two checkpoints for every country. That is also still under consideration. That proposition was made as far as 2007, but yet we still see that. 
that I also come out with uh, my own proposition towards effective regional migration uh, as for, uh, for countries, for uh, people who violate, for countries, nation states that violate uh, uh, the protocols or uh, the principles embedded in the ECOWAS Treaty, there should be sanctions irrespective of which nation that is involved, whether it is Big Brother Nigeria or Ghana or Togo or whatever, I mean, they, uh, the rules or sanctions should be applied, kind of like uh, facilitate the smooth implementation of the ECOWAS Treaty. There is a need for political commitment. I mean, we shouldn't always have these ECOWAS meetings where we have presidents go to, it shouldn't be a talk shop or places to drink tea and patronize and watch you. I mean, uh, and what have you? There should be political commitment towards the implementation of uh, numerous challenges that have been generated. I have to state that these are by no means uh, exhaustive of all the challenges that are confronting free movement, establishment, of course, the ultimate integration of the West African region. But it is envisaged that effective cooperation between member states will eventually see the, uh, the smooth or eventual integration of the economic and political. But will that be a reality? That remains to be seen as we continue to research on the issue. Uh, thank you very much.